measuring the cow is not the same thing as fattening the cow. So that's used by the critics of testing. And the idea is that we can test all our kids to death. And that gives us some information. But that's not the same thing as improving their learning. Those are two different things. Measuring them, measuring the cow is not the same thing as fattening the cow. My name is Joanna Che. I am the director of Mola Sacta Science and the financial manager of University Assisted Community Schools. The Keystone exam is a standardized exam, I believe, that's mandated by the state. And uh, it, there are three keystones that students take in high school. So they, there's the biology keystone, there's algebra one, and there's literature. So uh, these Keystone exams in the past were not required for graduation, but starting with class of 2019, uh, it's become a requirement for graduation. And the alternative is to submit some sort of project, but the guidelines for that seem to be a little bit obscure. And so schools are really pushing to try to get students to pass this exam. And it's, and it's measuring you know, their, their mastery. And um, if they do not pass, then they won't graduate until they do pass. From my understanding, the Keystone exam for biology is very difficult in that it, it tests uh, very, it tests everything from details to um, like uh, difficult vocabulary. So things that you know, if, if you know it, then you know it, but if you don't, you, you, you can't get the question. Um, so there are a lot of skills that are needed in order to assist our students to pass this exam. Some of the challenges are getting our students to take this subject a little serious, a little bit more serious, due to the fact that um, now that we changed the requirement for uh, when the students get biology, they start now in ninth grade. So now we're our, one of the challenges is getting them to the point where they see science as important as math and, and reading. Um, a lot of the students have come in and told me that they haven't had some of the science um, topics haven't heard or wasn't taught science in the middle school. Um, so some of them, this is like their first experience with a real science class. For West Philadelphia High School, the pass rate is very low. Um, it's almost around like 13% or lower. And the school district average is around 30%. So, um, uh, so this, this exam is difficult for everybody. And when, when when students are show, introduced to science as a form of standardized testing or any sort of difficult exam, I, I can only imagine what kind of psychological impact that can have. Now, I don't have any um, data to prove that, but um, if science is presented as some sort of obscure, uh, obscure field, I, I, I can only imagine that discourages students to pursue it. West Philadelphia High School is fortunate enough to have a Keystone Biology Specialist. So this is a full-time staff member who's trying to work with juniors um, 
and, and younger to, to pass this exam. I help support the teachers that teach the Keystone subject in biology, um, which means helping them to find resources uh, that would help prepare the students, um, help them employ strategies that would help prepare the students, um, and, and many other things as well. And it basically the position is to help improve the scores of the Keystone test. The material or the units that they want the students to know, it would be the units that I would teach anyway. The only thing, there's so much material in the standards that there's not enough time to really go back to reteach. I think it puts a lot of pressure on the teachers. Um, it, a lot of teachers have told me that it takes the fun out of teaching. Um, they don't enjoy what they're doing. On the other hand, I understand the need for this. It's an accountability tool. So, you know, to hold teachers accountable to what's being taught in the classroom. Because what we're seeing is students, especially um, in urban areas, they're, they're, uh, they are not performing as well as other schools. And um, the Keystone exams attempts to make the, the, the teacher and the school accountable to help those students in, in underserved areas to um, catch up and perform as well as other areas. There is some knowledge that we need to test and so it is necessary for us for the state on the state level I can imagine to try to evaluate these schools and try to get numbers in order to figure out how much support is necessary at a certain school or to provide additional support. So I understand the need for standardized testing but um, certainly students are um, find, students do find the exam difficult. I I'm glad that they had the Keystone. Um, I originally came from Ohio, and Ohio has had a graduation test since 1989. No, I'm sorry, the incoming class of 1988. So they went from the Ohio proficiency test to the Ohio graduation test. And it just makes the kids a little bit more serious about their education. Instead of just going through the motion, they actually have to master material in order to graduate. Honestly, it's, a, it's an effective format, but the, the students should be given some, some other way to prove that they've, maybe a student's not a good test taker. Um, the students should be given an alternative way of um, proving that they've mastered the material. So there's a lot of pressure on that student for one, one day, one test, um, to prove they've learned material, and some students may need some other way. So, and I know that they are developing a project-based assessment. It has not been implemented here in the district as, I, as far as I know, but um, I'd be interested in learning more about that. Stressful. Hard. Exhausted. Hurt. Frustrating. Hard. With the Keystone I don't think the kids are getting what they need to get to be prepared for that test, mm -hmm. you know, because of the difference in um, shortage of materials and things that they just don't have in the classroom on a daily basis to prepare them for those tests. Well, I think they need to uh, stop closing the schools because it's still costing them money to open the charter schools mm -hmm. and just start putting more money into the public schools that we can see. I just don't see the money that they ask for or been asking for and get every year and I don't see too much of it in some schools. Uh, my name is Rosanna Serino and I'm a math teacher here at West Philly High School. Well, the benchmark is all multiple choice. Um, there is a constructed response but it's not graded online, so it doesn't go into the district scores. They need more depth of knowledge to do the Keystone. A lot of the benchmark, they can eliminate answers easily, but especially the constructive responses on the Keystone, they really have to have a really good depth of knowledge to be able to answer those questions. So, it, I mean, it's difficult, you know, it's, it's, it's very difficult for our kids to do that. 
about 90 students. The rest of the ninth grade will be taken in again in May because none of them passed. I mean, so. I mean, it's not a bad school. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like it. I mean, it's like, it's different. Mm -hmm. Cause okay. like, it's like all these different, like every high school has that. It. It's like different personalities clashing together. And not all the time they work out, but half of the time in high school, you'll find somebody you get along with, especially in the school. What do you think about the Keystone exams? Terrified of them. I mean, not terrified, but I just don't want to do them. I mean, it's a part of graduating and, you know, bettering yourself. But, I mean, at the same time, you, like, it's like, I felt like I haven't really mastered enough subjects. Like, English, I got that down and stuff like that. But math, I just feel like I, I haven't really, I don't really got a thorough thought of it. I don't excel at math, so sort of scared. But English and... English, I'm not really worried about English, but biology and math, those are the ones I'm sort of worried about because I don't want to take them again. It's like, I mean, I like, I kind of like the benchmarks because it keeps me like on task, knowing I have to cover this by this and like, I, I'm a test taker. So I like taking tests and I like preparing the kids for tests. But this keystone is just overwhelming for them. You see that they can't even focus for a class period. So imagine coming in and, and being hours in this test. I mean, they're, they're done. They're just, I don't know, it's just, I think it, we're getting too much into teaching for tests. So, what are they learning? I don't know. Yeah. I finished my high school in Korea where testing is the primary way to evaluate everybody. Um, in order to go to college, you just take one exam. It's, that's it. And uh, and and because of because of my upbringing in that sense, I I I do have this ethical dilemma in that you know students in Korea they they take all these exams and and the ones that do well do very well. Um, and so uh, I wouldn't want to demonize exams. I don't think that's 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 the message I want to send. But um, it certainly does restrict and it certainly does limit creativity and it, um, it's a system that's designed to help, help students who do very well and to stratify the student population. And so um, the students that don't feel motivated enough or don't really understand the material, they're, they're left behind. Maybe there's reasons why the kids don't learn as much that aren't your fault. And this brings us to the big pushback on standardized testing, which is that having standardized testing for kids across the country is fine, but if we don't first see that every kid has equal opportunities, and that means equal resources, aren't we just going to show that poor kids don't score as well? Affluent kids score better. I mean, do, do we need to spend millions on tests to find this out? Before we hold students accountable or schools accountable, shouldn't we first equalize resources and opportunities? In other words, the argument is until we can ensure everyone has adequate resources and opportunities, it's unfair to hold the students accountable, to hold the parents or the schools or the teachers accountable. So that's the big pushback. Got to have sufficient opportunity, otherwise it's just a foregone conclusion who's going to be passing and who's not.